Welcome to the Blind Mole, everyone. Mole here, as you recognize me, maybe, with my sh shorter hair. And this is my friend Zach, who is joining me. He's going to be part of our videos because he's a fan of movie music, as that's the only requirement. And it's an honor. Thank you. It apparently is an honor. Uh, he's going to be telling us a little bit about what we're doing in this new and exciting setup. So we're going to be looking at... 10 of the most underrated soundtracks out there. There's a lot. And we've, we've dug up many subpar movies that many people aren't familiar with that actually have phenomenal soundtracks. So to do that, we're actually going to do a little game rather than just a traditional top 10. We're going to look at a soundtrack. And then we, Mole and I are going to rate it based off of saying whether the music is better, spot on, or worse than the movie itself. So we're looking at the movie and the music and how those two play together. And as you notice, I have my own, so we are not always going to agree. And you guys can be the judges on whether or not Zach is right or I'm right. It could get ugly. Spoiler alert, I will be right. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, Doug, let's bring on the nominees. First, James Newton Howard's The Village. So, is the music of The Village better than, worse than, or spot on with what we think of the movie? We need some ready? drums. I'm ready. I said spot on. Mole said better. Explain yourself. It's way better. Okay, The Village was a decent movie, but the soundtrack may be one of the greatest soundtracks I've ever heard. You have some fantastic music. I don't think anyone thinks The Village is like a staple in horror so i agree it is a phenomenal soundtrack that violin is haunting it creates this very foreboding atmosphere to the movie and and really brings the whole feel of the movie together but i love the movie i think it is one of Shyamalan's best best twists it just keeps you on edge and then it's it's a phenomenal movie and i think both match up perfectly well okay then Probably Next like after Earth Two. Oh please. <laughs> Next contender. Thank you, Doug. Ooh, I like this one. We bought a zoo by Yonzi. Okay. Ready? And we agree. Better. I would say a subpar movie with some great moments, a great message, but a phenomenal soundtrack. Right? Agreed. I mean, Scarlett Johansson's in it, so you can't say it's a terrible movie. You're never going to go wrong. So this, is, this was Yonzi's first debut as a film composer. He comes from the, the um, band Seager Rose. So this is kind of like a Danny Elfman, Oingo Boingo scenario where, where you have someone from a traditional band, popular band, who's coming and, and paving a new path for himself in, in movie music. And we've seen that with – we've seen bands do – uh, movies like Oblivion, Tron, and they tend to be pretty amazing soundtracks. And We Bought a Zoo, if you haven't listened to it, is so much better in my opinion that you could listen to it right now without ever, ever even watching the movie and be blown away. Agreed. Because John's is so flippin' amazing. Yeah. Next. Thank you. My Dog Skip by Ooh. William Ross. Ooh. Shall we? Spot on. I want to hear. On. I want to hear your explanation there. Well, I said I, better. I am a sucker for canines. I will admit it. Any movie that involves a dog, I think I wept openly in Marley and Me. I'm probably not the only one. But man, Will Ross's work in My Dog Skip was unbelievable. As yeah. was the movie. Great, great soundtrack. I the movie. I need to go back and watch it. I put it in this '90s category of just like Frankie Muniz was kind of the child star at the time, and just kind of a. I, I would think that it was just a subpar movie. I do have a tender place for dogs, um, so but I have been listening to the soundtrack a lot, and I think it's it's amazing, um, and I think it holds the movie up. What happened to William Ross? That's what I wanted. That is a good question. I I don't know what else he's done, but uh, I'm gonna go look. Next one. Thank you, Doug. October Sky by Mark Isham. Okay. Okay. Wow. Worse. Worse. The music is worse than the movie. I, I disagree. Wow. Well, I agree because that's right. Funny. I I think October Sky's soundtrack was less than memorable. In fact, I had to be reminded what the theme was like because I just didn't remember it. The movie, on the other hand, I quite enjoyed. 
This might be, in my opinion, the most underrated soundtrack of all time. Uh, besides one other contender, which we'll address momentarily, it is a phenomenal soundtrack. And, and I'm surprised to hear you say that because it's very symmetrical to The Village. You have this solo violin that I think reflects the movie so well. You have this group of boys that are venturing, this blazing this new trail, trying to put a rocket in the air. And then you just have this, this solo violin that just like matches the loneliness of their path. And it's just beautiful. Uh, October Sky, it's not even on Spotify. That's how underrated it is. Worse. Go listen to it. Worse. If it wasn't, if the movie wasn't so good, I would say it's far better. But the movie is phenomenal. It'll make you cry. So go look it up. It's most underrated. I please I, refrain from using hyperbole on the channel without please, warning please. the listeners. This okay, is, this is not even a discussion. Next soundtrack. This may surprise you. The Amazing Spider-Man by James Horner. Mm, mm, mm. One of Horner's lesser knowns. Had to have a James Horner in here with this yep. guy. Oh, yeah. And... Okay, better. We agree. That's easy. It was, I, it was a close one for me, though, because I think the movie is pretty good. Yeah. I'm a Tobey Maguire guy, so Andrew Garfield wasn't... He was too cool for me. But if you haven't listened to this soundtrack, you're going to be blown away. It may be one of James Horner's best albums. And it may be one you've never even realized he did. If you need all the feels, if you're feeling sad, the tracks I Can't See You Anymore and Rooftop Kiss are just, you would never believe that it comes from a superhero movie. So I say better because I'm not a huge superhero guy. I know that's um, like uh, forbidden to say on this Blasphemy. channel. Blasphemy. But, uh, but, uh, but that soundtrack is, is phenomenal. Go listen to those tracks and you'll see what we mean and why it is so underrated out of James Horner's works. Rest in peace. Next one. This is a great one. James Newton Howard again, Treasure Planet. You didn't see that coming. Ready? Ready. Wow. Spot on. I said better. He says spot on. I need you to explain that. Movie was subpar, and I thought the soundtrack was subpar. I'll be honest. Wow. One or two songs, tracks on there that I thought were really good. The theme itself I thought was great, but when it comes to James Newton Howard, I could name 10 albums by him that I like more than that. I listen to that soundtrack, and I want to go conquer the world. I just feel like I could vanquish anything. And the movie, it just pirates on ships in the air it's just kind of this acid trip that i'm not into but the music is is so high above the movie you listen to the music and you're thinking no way was this a disney flop because it was sure it was next john williams which this is going to surprise you how could john williams have an underrated soundtrack well he does and it's a movie called hook Arr. Your this is a tough crook. one. Captain Hook. All right, I'm okay. ready. Okay. Ooh, opposite ends of the spectrum. Better oh, and worse. Gracious. This is easy for me because I think the soundtrack is very good, but that is a classic movie. And you said that the, the critics tore it apart, right? Yeah, critics didn't like Hook for some reason. That's a tragedy. I think Hook is one of John Williams' best albums ever. Wow. And that includes... All of his albums, including Star Wars, E.T., Jurassic Park. Harry Potter. Go listen to uh, Discovering Child, Remembering Childhood and Don't Cry. Or You Are the Pan when he takes off his glasses. Ooh. Way better. Great movie. Rest my case. Good, good soundtrack. Next. I love this soundtrack. Moneyball by Michael Dana. Mmm. Both say spot on. Spot on. on. Uh, top five favorite movie of mine. I think it is a great, great movie. It is. And are you a baseball fan? I'm not even a baseball fan. I, I like baseball, but I think it is. It's a true story, but it is such a unique and original sports film. It's 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 the underdog, but done in an entirely new way, and it's all true. I think it's it's amazing. But that soundtrack, there's just so go listen to the process, or it's a process. There is just something about. You know, this it just to me it just screams this underdog you know going through this process of of becoming this team that was was off the radar and and just that evolution throughout the movie and the music it just goes so well Spot really on. really unique score by michael dana and 
Uh, I would also point out the, the, the track, the, the Streak, if I could speak. Okay. The Streak was also fantastic on there. We Fair. finally agree. Fair. Spot on. Arrival. A uh, more, um, more recent arrival, if you will, to the cinematic universe. <sighs> I say spot on. Mole says worse. Okay, this is an interesting point. We were talking about this before. And, you know, there's some soundtracks I remember when I watch the movie. There's some soundtracks I want to go listen to after I watch the movie. And then there's some, tra some soundtracks I don't remember when I watch or I don't want to listen to after. And Arrival was that for me. It was completely unmemorable. So I think this is where we have to make an important distinction that it's – when we think about underrated soundtracks, it's not just about the most beautiful underrated soundtracks, but it's soundtracks that really enhance the film itself. That soundtrack is very unique. It's very different. It's very extraterrestrial, if you will. So you have, I mean, you listen to that soundtrack and then you just picture this object that just appears in the air and no one knows what it is and it just matches it. It's just eerie and it's mysterious and it's um, it's kind of trancy. It's very different. It is. It is spot. Worse. It's a great movie, it's and it's a great soundtrack. Go listen to both. Pay attention to the soundtrack when you do that deep bass when they're going up into the the giant jelly bean thing. Amazing. Well, and that's an interesting point. If, if you guys out there, do you value the listenability of a soundtrack after you see the movie more, or do you value it in context with the movie itself? When you guys are evaluating soundtracks on your own, I'd be curious to hear some comments on that. What's, yeah. what's more important to you, that in-the-moment soundtrack, like uh, Zach's describing, or you know something more like Hook, or something where you want to go back and listen to over and over and over? That's fair. Next. Last one. The last one. And I'm very excited about this one. Um, once again, I'm on the show, so we're doing a lot of James Horner. He's popular, but he does have some underrated soundtracks. Bicentennial Man. Okay. So you slipped in a second Horner. I'll yep. give it to you. Spot on. I'm Spot surprised on. to hear you say that. I say better. I thought you would have said worse. This is well, interesting. the movie was terrible. Okay, so let me just preface it. That oh, way. gosh. Did anyone like Bicentennial Man? Is... I'm being honest here. Put your hand Doug down. Doug liked Doug. it. <laughs> Can we get the camera John on Williams Doug? Williams not being funny. I'm sorry. I just wasn't into it at all. And the, the music was so derivative. Robin it was Williams. other stuff. I, we have a video about this. It, there was nothing original about what James Horner did in Bicentennial Man. And I love James Horner. Okay. So... Right. I don't have much attachment to the movie. Um, I think it's just an okay movie. But then you add the soundtrack, all of a sudden the movie actually hits hits the feels. The movie is this enormous passage of time, and and generations it was and an generations. Enormous passage. It was. It went. We went through like four four generations. Robots time. live forever. So. So the movie should last forever. Right, and it does. It's like a three-hour movie. But I the the soundtrack is. One of Horner's best because it's a – like you said, it's a conglomerate of some of Horner's best. Every composer has a style, and it trickles into various movies that they do. This is like a conglomerate. You, you see bits and pieces of Deep Impact. You see bits and pieces of, of Legends of the Fall. You see bits and pieces of Casper. It's, it's, yeah. it's really a blend of all these great soundtracks, and it just – Gift of Mortality, go listen to it and tell him how wrong he tell is. Tell me it's original enough. It's, a, it's maybe – well – I didn't claim originality, but it is beautiful and it enhances the movie. And it is anyone that could sit through the end of that entire movie, I'm sorry. Just go listen. Got to do something better with your if life. you have to. Now we did have some honorable mentions that didn't make this list. Zach, what are some of those? So Real quick list them. So on. James Horner, we've got. I'm sorry, James Horner again. Rocketeer. Um, Thomas Newman. We we're going to throw in Meet Joe Black. I think that's that's an amazing soundtrack. Um, what else? Um, uh, James Newton Howard has has quite a few. He has a lot. Um, uh, whether it's it's Sixth Sense or or even Signs, I think he has. There's there's a lot out there, and I hope we can do a, a follow up on this because because I think we've only hit the tip Scratched of the iceberg. Surface. So what what did we miss? What would you guys say are the most underrated soundtracks? And seriously, comment and list them off because I want to listen to them if I yeah, haven't heard them. We need more. And we're going to be getting into some other fun stuff. With Doug on board, we're going to be talking a little bit more about video games as well. So those of you who are big gamers, a lot of movie composers get into the video game world and they dabble. 
So we're gonna get into that as well. And we're gonna be talking about some more fun things. So stay tuned and we'll see you next week on The Blind Mole. Thanks for watching this episode of The Blind Mole. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe and check out our other videos on the channel. Also, don't hesitate to comment, ask questions, or propose ideas for future videos.